Welcome to part six in my video series on making the Stuart 10V vertical steam engine. In this part, I will be making the cylinder covers. These fit uh, at each end of the cylinder. Uh, on the top, it simply caps the cylinder off. On the bottom, it fits between the cylinder and the standard and uh, seals both ends of the cylinder uh, so that the engine will operate properly. Uh, to make these two parts, uh, they provide a piece of cast iron bar that is much longer than we actually need to make the part. Uh, that's so that it can be chucked properly in the lathe. These two parts, as you can see from the diagram, are very similar. They're the same diameter, they're roughly the same thickness, and so it makes sense to machine both of them at the same time. Uh, but before starting these, I put a fair amount of thought into the sequence of operations because there's a number of things that are going to be important for this. Uh, getting the outside diameter will be fairly straightforward. We'll just turn the bar down to size. But then we need to look at it. For the top piece, we have a small raised area that needs to fit uh, into the cylinder. You'll notice that's three quarters of an inch in diameter, which is the same size as the cylinder bore. The top of it is just cosmetic, so that's not very important. Uh, so that piece is going to be relatively straightforward. The bottom cylinder cover uh, is a little more involved, and there's several things we need to look at here. Again, uh, it's kind of hard to see in the drawing, but there is a small raised area that is three quarters of an inch in diameter that fits into the bottom of the cylinder, and that aligns the cover with the cylinder. We also need to go through, and there's a hole all the way through it for the piston rod to fit through, and then there is a drilled and tapped hole for the uh, glands nut to fit into. It's very important that the uh, those be aligned exactly on center with the raised boss that goes into the cylinder. Otherwise, if there any offset there is going to push the piston off to one side and will interfere with the operation. The other thing that's important is we've got two faces to this. The top piece here in the drawing fits up against the cylinder. The bottom piece fits against the standard. Those need to be uh, as close to parallel as possible because if they're not, I'll show it with some exaggeration here, but if those were not parallel, what we could end up with is the cylinder being canted. Obviously, this is an exaggeration, but uh, if it's not, if they aren't parallel, the cylinder will sit to one side, and then as the piston goes up and down, it's not going to remain centered within the cylinder. So we need to go through and make sure that those uh, three features are completely in alignment for the holes and that the two faces are parallel. So in uh, working out the operations here, I've decided the first thing I'm going to do is chuck the cast iron in the three-jaw chuck because at the starting point it doesn't have to be super precise. I don't need a four-jaw chuck here. I'm going to be turning some off the edge and that will guarantee that the part is uh, aligned with the lathe axis. The next thing I'm going to do is align the cylinder side piece of the upper cover. Uh, I can actually use the cylinder itself as a test guide to make sure that that fits. Once I've got that machine to the right diameter, I will part off the top cover and I will worry later on about machining the top part. After that, I'll face the casting off cleanly. I've already got it to the right diameter, and I'm going to machine the uh, lower part with the uh, threads for the gland nut of the lower uh, cylinder cover and drill the center hole all the way through. By doing those while it's all chucked, that will guarantee that the boss that goes into the standard is centered to that hole and that the hole is and the gland nut are all perfectly aligned, which will, I will then part it off and I will then have to machine the 
cylinder side of that, and I'll be making a thin piece chuck to do that. I'll talk about when we get to that, that will guarantee that it's aligned properly, and I'll use the uh, thin piece chuck to machine the remaining sides of the two pieces. Once that's done, I will go through and use the rotary table on the mill to put the five holes into each of the uh, covers, get those sp spaced properly. And then I'm not sure if I'll get to it in this video or not, I'll have to look at timing. But then the next step will be to transfer those holes to the actual cylinder and the standard so that everything can be uh, finished up and we'll have completed that part of the assembly. So now for the first part of this, we'll go to the lathe and uh, mount the stock and get that turned to the overall outside diameter. Okay, I had to switch to the outside jaws to get this to uh, clamp properly. I have checked the end and I have enough uh, extending from the end of the jaws to assure that I'll have enough to get both of the pieces off and still be able to part them off. And so now the first step is to face this and Okay, that's faced off nicely. Now we need to see what we need to do on the diameter. At 1.388, and I am looking for 1.375. I need to take off 13 thousandths. That's not a whole lot, but it should be enough to get a clean finish. Start by taking off about five. Okay, I've still got a small spot here. I don't know if it shows up on the camera where it didn't quite get through the skin. Uh, I'm going to have to cut it a little deeper it looks like. But I also need to pay attention to the overall diameter. There wasn't a lot of excess material there to begin with. I am at 1.370, which is already five thousandths under my target. That's not going to matter. That isn't a critical dimension. But I do want this to look good. I think I'm going to take an extra, I think an extra couple of thousandths ought to do it. Okay, that has a clean cut all the way around. Let's look at the dimension we ended up with. One point three six seven, about eight thousandths under what I wanted, but that was the minimum cut that I could do to get a clean finish, so that'll have to do. Again, that outside diameter isn't referenced to anything, uh, and having, but it is visible, so having it clean was more important than having it at the precise dimension. For the top cylinder cover, we need to have a small uh, boss protruding that uh, is three quarter inches in diameter, which is an exact fit for the inside of the cylinder and it needs to stand proud of the flange by about by 31 thousandths, a 32nd of an inch. So to set that up, the first thing I'm going to do is I've locked the uh, cross slide and I'm going to do all of the uh, machining with the uh, 
controls on the cross slide. First thing I'm going to do is bring in the tool until it just touches off and set zero on uh, the slide. So I know that I'll need to come in 31 thousandths to get the depth right. Now I'm going to come out, bring it forward one full turn, and I'm going to touch off on the outside edge so I've got a rough idea where I'm starting. I need to take 0 0.307 off to get. So I'll start by taking about uh, 0.3 and take a test measurement. Seven five five. That's very close. Let's see if that fits. And that is basically a ringing fit. Pull it off, it'll come off, but if I give it a slight twist. Okay, that's interesting. It fits on that side. There is enough of a difference I'm going to need to note top and bottom. So let me mark that. Those will clean off later, but I've marked the top of the cylinder so I can tell which side is which. That is a perfect fit. And double check the depth. Point three one, perfect. Now we need to part that off. Ended up with a nice clean part off. And down a bit, we'll be able to go machine it. That'll be the top of the cylinder cover. Let's see how that fits. And 
that is a perfect fit on top of the cylinder. Hold that down. Comes right off if I want it to, but perfectly snug. Between that and then the gasket that will fit on it, that will be a very good fit. And we had to take it, make it a little smaller than we'd planned, but all I have to do is I can actually file down the casting through here so that I'll get a perfect fit with the cladding that goes on uh, towards the end as part of the final fitting. Next step, well, actually that's, I want to put a clean facing cut on this, but the next step will be to machine the bottom part of the bottom cylinder cover.